Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? I'm so excited for this video because we're going to be doing a ranking video with the Kaleidos makeup palettes. I have every single one that they currently sell. They used to have a deep sea luster palette, but it's no longer available. I've heard from pretty good sources that it's never coming back. So we're gonna be ranking and swatching all of these from worst to best. And then I also thought I would kind of throw in some comparisons as we go as well, because I get questions every once in a while where it's like, how do these browns compare? How do the purples compare? So I thought that hopefully this would be overall pretty helpful. I didn't originally plan on filming this overhead, but my face is breaking out in hives. So this felt like quality content that I could still film and keep on track with Indie Mist. I just wanna say really quickly that I was sent all of these palettes in PR, but I'm gonna be giving my honest opinion as always. And honestly, none of these are bad. When I rank them from worst to best, it's genuinely just based on personal preference. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, so coming into eighth place, we have the Kaleidos Futurism Cyber Bronze Palette. This was one of the first original palettes that they ever released. I'm going to grab a little piece of paper to cover up the mirror. Here's what it looks like. It is really cute. There's a mixture of warm tones and cool tones. And honestly, even though I'm ranking this and it's in last place, I do think it's a nice palette. It has something unique about it for still being a neutral palette. It has a really, really beautiful red, a beautiful silver. The reason why I put this in last place is just because it's the palette that I reach for the absolute least. I feel like overall as a color story, it doesn't super, super inspire me. But again, the quality is really nice. So starting off, we've got this really intense matte brown, a little bit more on the cool tone side. Oh man, okay, my angle's all off because I've got a bunch of stuff here, one second. Then we have this shade here, which is a pretty rich, warm brown. These do all have names, but they came in like a little sheet, and I don't keep those sheets ever. And then we have a light kind of camely brown, which I do really like that kind of tone. Next we have this metallic silver, which is absolutely stunning. Really, really pretty. The, oh, I guess I should have swatched that on my arm. I was going one by one. <laughs> we have the metallic red here. So, they really, really shine when it comes to their metallics. And then last but not least, we have a really pretty like rose gold shimmer. Very beautiful, even though it's in last place. I mean, just look at that. Okay, next coming into seventh place, we have the Futurism VR Neon Palette, and this one is cool because it has some very bright shades. I don't know if I would call them like true, true, super intense neons, but they are bright, and it kind of gives me a little bit more of a rainbow vibe. I guess the reason this one's in seventh place is because I just don't reach for it as much. I also don't feel super inspired by the color story, like there's a gold and a pink which the pink is really beautiful on its own. It has like a stunning shift, but just like all together when I look at this, I don't have like 10 million looks coming to mind. And mm, I mean, it's still nice. I just, I, I would prefer their other palettes more, I guess would also come into factor with this being in seventh place. Start off right here, we've got a really bright lime green matte. We've got a, ooh, there's a little bit of fallout there. A very bright yellow matte and then, <laughs> Do you see the mess I'm making? Okay, I guess these ones have a little bit more fallout. I hadn't realized. We've got a bright orange matte. So I don't know if you can tell. They are definitely bright, but I wouldn't say neon. Next we have a bright red matte. We've got this really beautiful pink, like I said. It has a bit of a blue shift to it and it's just super metallic and creamy. And then we've got this shade, which is stunning as well. It's like a yellowy orange shimmer. And again, the quality on those are so, so good. So there is the entire VR Neon palette. Next, coming into sixth place, we have the Sashimi City palette from Kaleidos. And I really do like this one. 
I would say it's ranked a little bit further down because it's more of a basic color story. And honestly, if you're someone who's a soft, neutral lover, this would be the very first palette I would recommend from Kaleidos. I feel like it's just very soft, very wearable, very everyday, if that's kind of your vibes. But for me, I feel like it's a little bit basic. I'm happy they have it. I feel like it really did add variety to their eyeshadow lineup. Mm, it's not like their most inspiring or my favorite palette from them. It's still beautiful. And the shimmers in here are amazing. So starting off we have this nice warm matte brown and I would say that feeling these compared to the other mattes I've just watched which are a little bit older from them, these do feel a bit more soft which if I remember correctly I feel like I read an email that someone shared saying that Kaleidos said they made these a little bit softer on purpose or something like that. But I do not have any issues blending or using these. I know I saw some people not loving this newer formula as much, but I had no issues. And then we have this shade right here, which is a really beautiful kind of like peachy salmon-y matte transition. Let's go ahead and swatch those two. You can see they swatch really nice. And they're just very, very smooth feeling. And then coming up to this first shimmer here, such a beautiful shade. It has like a mixture of pink and gold. It's a really stunning duochrome. Again, just giving a little bit of a comparison between this type, this formula of shimmers compared to their older palettes. These are definitely a little bit drier to the touch. They feel a little bit more sparkly. I'd be more inclined to use these every time with a glitter primer, but they are beautiful nonetheless, obviously. Okay, next we've got this soft, kind of like a just a tan brown. It doesn't quite have enough depth to truly be a camely matte. It's a little bit lighter, almost has like a bit of a orangey peachy tone. And then we've got this shimmer, which is one of my favorites. Look at that. It is so stunning. It has like a yellow shift that's borderline light green and a pink base. It's just one of the prettiest shimmers if you're using it all over the lid or on the inner corner. I feel like it really does spice up a neutral look so, so well, or you could just use it as a topper. It's stunning. And then last but not least, we have this brown here, which looks like a little bit more cool toned compared to the first brown. I wish that they had done one like deeper really rich brown in this palette rather than having these two browns which although they are different undertones they are very similar in depth so I wish that one of these had been like the richest deepest brown possible and I think that would have added just a little bit more um, versatility and usefulness so there's what that looks like like I said if you're a neutral lover it's a great one okay coming into fifth place we have the Kaleidos Astro Pink palette and this one is really beautiful. It's one of my favorite packagings. I just feel like it looks so, so cool. And honestly, like getting down to the top five, I know there was only eight, but this is really hard. And I really do like this one. I think it's very fun. And I love like these four shades right here. Like those are just everything to me. I love like the soft rosewood matte. I love the pinky platinum shade. Like that is one of the stunning shimmers. This blue is stunning. I think the reason this one didn't make it higher up is because for one, I feel like these two shades are a little bit too similar. I wish that this had either been, I think another shimmer would have been really pretty. Like it's like an iridescent something for the inner corner or a duochrome or like a bright pink metallic to go along with this could have been cool. Just something to add a little bit more variety between those two. And then with this shade, I don't really love matte shades that have sparkles in them. So that's just not my personal preference. I think I would like this palette more if it was just a plain matte black. To be fair, I like that they're not really um, repeating themselves because a palette that I'm going to speak about in a little bit has a very true, super rich, deep matte black. So I'm sure they were just adding a little bit of variety. Didn't want to use the same exact shade twice. But still, for me, I just don't love shades like that. So starting off, like I said, we've got this really, really light matte shade. Because I am super fair, it's still going to show up on me, but it is definitely more on the pale side. It has like a little bit more of a rosy undertone. And then we've got this one, which is a similar undertone. I like it a little bit more. 
And see, even swatching out on me, obviously I can see the difference between the two shades. I have super white skin, so it's gonna show the difference more, but I feel like on a lot of skin tones, the difference isn't gonna show is what I'm trying to say. And then we've got this shade. Oh my goodness, it is so beautiful. It's like a super light pinky platinum shade with like a tiny, tiny little bit of purple. It is just everything. Look at that. So smooth, so metallic, so creamy. Next we have this really beautiful berry matte shade, which feels a little bit drier, but I love this color. I feel like it adds something really, really fun to this palette. And then we have this blue purple. Look at that. It's such a stunning duochrome. It doesn't feel as creamy as it did when I first got it. I've definitely had this for a while, but still the purple to blue shift is beautiful. Just do those two, look at that. Stunning. And then here is the black sparkly shade, which isn't even bad, like it's a nice formula. Like I said, that's definitely personal preference alone. Okay, next coming into fourth place, we have the Escape Pod, which honestly, I don't love the packaging as much on this one. It is a pretty thick, like chunky 15 pan palette. So there's what it looks like. And I guess the reason I don't love the packaging as much, I mean, I don't really care about like the thickness, but I just feel like the other palettes they do, like the six pan, just adorable little color stories, is very unique whereas like this kind of thing I could see a lot of brands doing. So the reason this is in fourth place is because I do feel like you can get a lot of variety out of this palette. It has really beautiful greens, purples, there's a few pops of neutral so I feel like there is a lot going on here. Overall I like the formula of it. It's not my absolute favorite from them. You'll see the next top three are like my ride or die palettes, but I do think that this one's really nice. It's a lot of bang for your buck. And again, personal preference, if you're someone who doesn't love small palettes, you wanna have a little bit more options, this is really nice. Okay, so we've got this light purple first. Just a really beautiful pale shade. Like I said, I'm gonna do some comparisons at the end to show the different palettes and see how different they are because this one does have some tones pretty similar to the Lunar Lavender palette. And then next we have a really beautiful pinky purple and then a true matte pink. Okay, to be fair, that one didn't swatch well, but I could feel it dragging on my skin. It's getting a little bit dry from so many swatches. Okay, next we have a bright orange matte, a bright blue matte, and this really beautiful light champagne sparkly shade. I love that one. Okay, we've got this rose shade, but it has like a pinkiness to it. This really beautiful light blue purple duochrome, and then a deeper like burgundy purple. Ooh, it's so pretty. Okay, next we have this bright green, and there are two bright greens here. They're a little bit different. This one's just a touch deeper, and this one has like a tiny little bit of an aqua, like tiny aqua shift. So again, I feel like there could have been a little bit more variety between those two, but they are really pretty. And then we have a soft kind of taupey cool tone brown, which again, I like. Okay, next we've got a beige, definitely don't care about that, a coral shade, and then a really, really nice deep chocolatey brown. It blends so beautifully. So there is the entire palette swatched out. Okay, next coming into third place, we have the Sci-Fi Green palette. And I really, really like this one. This is super cute because it has like the grungy greens, which I really love. It has the really beautiful bright metallic gold, metallic green, kind of camely orangey matte shade, and one of the best blacks that I own. So I feel like overall this is a really nice palette. The reason it's ranked third is because obviously I love it, 
but I don't feel like it's super unique, especially because this came after Melt Gemini. I feel like if it came first, I would have like given it a little bit more recognition for being unique. Um, so I appreciate it. I like it for what it is. But the other two color stories that I'm going to be doing next, coming in first and second place, have a little bit more something new to them, to me at least. So starting off with this black, you guys aren't ready. So nice. And then we've got this mid-tone grungy green. We've got this one, which is a little bit more yellowy, but again, kind of between those two, I wish that there was a little bit more variance. Like this one, either a little bit lighter or this one a little bit darker. Okay, next we have one of the prettiest greens. Look at that shade. So stunning. Yellow, again, both of them super creamy. And then here's the last matte shade. Super nice. Okay, coming into second place, we have the Electro Turquoise Palette. I love this one. It is so, so pretty. Honestly, I think that this is the most unique color story that they have done. Look at that. I just love the pops of blue with the orange. I think a lot of brands would be afraid to do that because orange and blue, if you use them, together like if you blend them together they will turn muddy and you know a lot of brands I think want to play it more on the safe side I just feel like if you use these and you understand color theory they contrast each other so so well and it's just beautiful I just I love it and I really can't think of any other palettes that even remotely remind me of this one so that's why it's in second place I also think that this blue is stunning you know I love a good iridescent light inner corner shade, so this palette just makes me happy. Also, like the amount that the packaging matches what's happening inside, living. <laughs> so first we have this shade here, which is a beautiful iridescent sparkly shade. Look at that. I hope you guys can see the sparkles. We've got a really beautiful light turquoisey blue matte super pigmented we've got a bright matte orange Ooh, okay let me swatch that a little bit more there we go okay, next we have this beautiful beautiful turquoise metallic look at that look at that we've got a nice deep blue like navy but it still has a little bit of a greenness to it and then a really beautiful, oops, I just touched my skin, deep brown. Oh my gosh. Do you guys see what I just did? I'm making such a mess. Okay. So there's the entire palette swatched out. I think you can tell why I love it so dang much. Okay, last but not least, coming in first place, we have the Lunar Lavender Palette. I just love this one. It again, packaging is so, so cute, but inside it's just one of my top favorite purple palettes. There's some nice purple mattes. I love that these are very different from one another. This one's much lighter. This one's more of a mid-tone. There's two browns, again, a lighter transition-y shade, and then a nice deep cool tone brown. And then between the two metallics, I just love the variety in here. I feel like you can go so soft. You can go so bold, they blend really nice, and these shimmers are just everything. So that's why I decided to choose it as number one. I just went with my heart, honestly. <laughs> okay, so starting off with this nice cool tone matte brown. There's what that looks like. Then we've got the light lavender purple. This purple matte. Next, we've got this beautiful light purple duochrome. It has like a gray base to it and like, like a little tiny bit of like a pinky purple shift. I just think it's really, really pretty. Again, you could use it on the inner corner or all over the lid and you could use it with the neutrals, use it with the purples. It's just a stunning shadow. Again, that's, these two I would use with glitter primers. This is one of their newer palettes. 
And then we have this one here, which is a really beautiful purple blue shifting duochrome. And then lastly, this really beautiful light brown has a little bit of a rosiness to it. So there is my favorite palette from Kaleidos. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some quick comparison swatches. I'm not gonna swatch every single thing, but the ones that really do look close, I'm gonna go through and do that. So let's see. Okay, so I went through and we've got an orange here, an orange in here, and then also the orange in the Electro Turquoise palette. So I wanna go through, I don't know if you can see that, and swatch all of those. So here's the Escape Pod, VR Neon, and Electro Turquoise for the oranges. I also thought it would be kind of interesting to go through and swatch all of the browns. So we're gonna do this deep brown here, just the deeper ones, I should say. Then we're gonna do the cool tone brown right here. Um, there is, let's see. We're gonna do both of the browns in this palette. Do the deeper brown here. And then there's also this deeper brown right here. Okay, so here's Cyber Bronze. Sashimi City, Sashimi City. Here's the Escape Pod, Lunar Lavender, and Electro Turquoise. Okay, next I definitely want to go through and do these two purples and this purple and compare them to the two purples here and this purple in Lunar Lavender. So here is the escape pod and honestly there's the lighter brown and the deeper brown as well which you could compare so I feel like even though these aren't going to be exact 100% the same I don't feel like you would need the escape pod and lunar lavender not necessarily okay and then here is lunar lavender oh wow okay you know what swatched out those are actually all quite different undertones I'm surprised. I thought that they were going to be a little bit closer than they are. Guess I could go and I could do Sashimi City. And I feel like we could compare a little bit here. There's the two rose gold shades, even though this one's a little bit more of a duochrome. We've got the two camely shades. And then there's also the warm browns. We'll do those three. Okay, here's Sashimi City. And here's Cyber Bronze. Again... All quite different you know I really want to go through and compare let's grab this one there's a camely brown shade here too I feel like we gotta show that one which that one's definitely more yellow than the others there is the gold in here which I can swatch and then we've also got the gold in here but I feel like I mean those are quite different Actually, you know what? We can do the two metallic greens in the escape pod in comparison with the metallic green here. There's sci-fi green, and then there's the escape pod. You can see this one's definitely much more yellow. Comparison. Also, there's like these, this rosy sh matte shade right here in Lunar Lavender. And I want to compare that to the rosy matte in Astro Pink. Okay, it looks like the Lunar Lavender one is a little deeper. I'll just make room for it right here. There's Lunar Lavender. And there's Astro Pink. Actually, you know what? Very, very similar, those two. All right, I pretty much have eyeshadow everywhere right now. But I really hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.